TF2 and CSGO are some of the most recognizable and popular games in the industry currently. TF2 keeps popping up in popular media for the consistent memes. CSGO is constantly popular with its consistent majors. Both of these games have stood the test of time, which is something rare. Most games' lifespans usually last from 6 months to a few years. Being so old also contributes to these games' popularity. However, between these two games, CSGO has been the more dominant game. It's not just preference and opinion, player counts also back up this statement. CSGO has averaged around a million concurrent players since the announcement of CS2, and TF2 averages a measly 50k to 100k players. It's no secret that CSGO has consistently had more players than TF2. What is a secret, however, is the price disparity between the in-game cosmetics and skins. Ignoring the recent spike of CSGO prices because of CS2, the prices between the two games have had an enormous gap since I can recall. An easy way to visualize the disparity is by comparing the prices of the rarest cosmetics in the most recent cases. If you look at the most recent ones, the CSGO M4A4 Eye of Horus easily clears the Trapper's Flap. The prices? The Eye of Horus is above the Trapper's Flap by about $2,445 USD. That is a great difference. Ignoring the fact that the TF2 case is about 6 months old, it's still a massive difference in prices. Why is it then? Why is there such a significant difference between the two games. The huge disparity comes from three main reasons I have boiled down. The three reasons are why I like to call the three R's. The three R's are rarity. <laughs> Recognizability and reach. Let's start with Rarity. This man in this clip is called Onipixel. He's a streamer and YouTuber who's heavily invested in his hobby of opening CSGO cases. In this specific clip, he's opening a capsule filled with stickers. You're probably wondering why his heart is around 175 and is on the verge of tears after not getting what he wanted. He's in that state not only because he's a lunatic, but also because the capsule he opened is worth around 19k. Why would you ever gamble a capsule worth that much? Well, in that capsule, he had a chance to quadruple his profits with a sticker that is synonymous with the CSGO market. The sticker? The Titan Hollow. Why is it so expensive, you may ask? Well, sit down, let me give you a little backstory. March 13th, 2014, or nine years ago if you want to feel old, marked the first ever major that received stickers. However, that same year, one of their new players, Kukli, was vac banned from all majors for cheating. A couple of years later, and the team disbands. Why is it so expensive then? Well, the main reason is the rarity and somewhat the history of the organization. Being from 2014, the way to acquire the sticker today is either by buying pre existing ones, which good luck with that, or by buying the 2014 capsule and praying to not end up with the same fate as our good friend Oni. You may say that since TF2 is older and has older hats, this shouldn't be an argument. TF2 got its first hats in 2009, while Seeds Go got skins in 2013. If you look at it like that, then it wouldn't make sense that Rarity is on here. However, let me show you some numbers. One of the first ever TF2 hats, a hat that can't be tamed through unboxing anymore, is called the Batter's Helmet. There's around 6,500 of these hats in circulation. Compared to the Titan Hollow, there are about less than 50 non-applied stickers. The rarity among TF2 cosmetics and CSGO skins is more complex than just pure age. With TF2, the rarest factor that is still obtainable among cosmetics unusuals can be unboxed for more than one hat, making it less special. With CSGO, the rarest thing you can unbox are knives. Different types of knives can get the same skin as a different knife. Knives and unusuals are considered the most expensive category among the respective games, but I do want to disclaim that this isn't always the case. With unusuals, some get down to around $4 USD. With CSGO, it gets around 75 USD, which, when it comes to knives, that's cheap. But when you compare it to TF2, that costs a pretty penny. However, there's a factor that applies to knives that give an extra edge over unusuals. 
it's a pattern. A pattern is a sheet of possible outcomes that your weapon can get. It usually ranges from 1 to 1000, but there are unique patterns that you can get on your knife that raises the price. The most desired and no knife has a particular pattern. The knife is a pattern 387 case hardened karambit. It has an estimated value of 1.5 million United States American standardized dollars. The price towers above the most expensive TF2 item which sits around 30k. Patterns aren't only for knives, but also for gloves and weapon skins. Of course, you could imagine that some other special patterns are also worth a lot. The case hardened AK-47 scar pattern is another example. Obviously, TF2 also has some special factors that CSGO doesn't have. One of these unique things is spells. Spells were something that was dropped in TF2's 2012 Scream Fortress. What spells did were either give your weapons or hats a special effect. This effect could range from either making your explosions become pumpkins or making your character's voice deeper. However, once spells themselves became untradeable, only weapons or hats with spells that were already applied could be traded. Some TF2 skins have varieties in the respective skin, but it's usually just swapping something on the skin to something else. However, they're less sought after than their counterparts. The only real outlier with that is the Macaw Mast. I left a guy in the description if you want to look into it. Macaw Mast has a pattern similar to CSGO. There are different types of patterns or gems that fetch higher prices than the original item. There's a variety of colors that you can combine, with some being wanted more than others. However, these specific patterns aren't known well in the TF2 community more outside the community. But CSGO doesn't have the same struggles as its older brother. Golden Frying Pan, Burning Flames Team Captain, Op Dragon Lore, M4A4 Howl. If there's one word that describes these four items perfectly, it would be recognizable. Recognizability is a key factor in whether or not someone will buy something. If you see a name brand cereal or a great value cereal, you'll most likely pick the name brand. I know this is a weaker argument, but just let me let me cook. Besides the Burning Flames Team Captain and Golden Frying Pan, if someone had never played TF2, how many items could the average person name. The Gibbous and Pyrovision goggles most likely, maybe the regular frying pan? Stout Shaco if they're old, but there aren't many TF2 items that the average person could name. Now let's try the same thing but with CSGO. Besides the Dragon Lore and the m 4 for Howl, how many items could the average person name without playing CSGO? Well, you got the Asimov family, you got the Hyper Beast family, the Karambit Fade, and Butterfly Knife Doppler. That's 11 and there's plenty more. I could have named off. I've probably missed some other skins as well. The recognizability of CSGO skins outclass TF2 cosmetics easily. I know both sides will more likely say they're more recognizable because of a bias, but I'm trying to be unbiased. In order to be unbiased as possible, I am writing this segment at 5am. Why? I have an awful sleep schedule and my memory will be worse. It'll test my brain on what it knows. These skins had to start from somewhere, but they're lucky they were blessed with a great upbringing. If there was one of these three reasons that TF2 was the closest to winning, it would have to be Reach. TF2's Reach has grown like a fungus. Any community you go to, whether it be pro sports or game communities, you'll find influence of TF2. It will be memes for the most part, but people will still see that and recognize the source material. TF2's meme status is in its own tier. You've probably seen some yourself, but there's something that CSGO does that puts TF2 to shame. This is something that the TF team tried multiple times over and over, something possible, but eventually it was forgotten. CSGO's competitive scene is one of the biggest esports in the world. TF2 has tried to comp, but it just hasn't come to fruition. Yes, TF2 has a great reach with its memes, but it had one problem, the language barrier. Most TF2 memes are in English, so if others would want to understand those memes, they would already have to know English. But competitive CS has no language barrier. Since NA isn't the biggest proprietor in player count, it has allowed CS to grow into the juggernaut that it is today. This has allowed some prices of skins to skyrocket. Why? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say you love a guy named Simple. He's your favorite player and you wish you could meet him. You have merch of him and try to copy his in-game skins. Turns out a lot of people are a fan of this guy. 
and a lot of those fans want to use the skins he uses. It comes to the point where traders notice this guy has market influence and they want the skins that he uses. This happens almost any time a popular player uses a new skin at a major. Majors don't only raise the prices of skins, they introduce the game of CS to new people, thus creating people who might buy skins. TF2 has no big competitive scene, and the one that does exist isn't as thriving as you would hope. There's no big prize pool, there's no big stadium, no nothing, but that's alright. The people who do play comp don't play it for those reasons, they play it because they love the game. With how much they go through, it just shines more light on how much this community loves this game. All these three reasons, rarity, recognizability, and reach, culminate to create the basis of this economy's supply and demand. Now, I might be wrong on some of these things since I'm not the most cultured in the CSGO market, but I feel this is an accurate and fair assessment. Regarding the TF2 side of the coin, it's alright to not be better. The gaze economy isn't a huge pillar. The cosmetics in TF2 still look great. Just because there isn't a 5 figure price tag to it doesn't mean it's any worse. Enjoy the things in TF2. Each game has its own pros and cons.